Hi, in this Scratch tutorial, I'm going to teach you a little bit about if then, if else, and loops. And what I've done here is I've created a Scratch program. I'm going to use four different keys on the keyboard, one, two, three, and four, to have the cat or the sprite do four different things. So let's take a look at these. The first thing I have up here is this is just a note. Uh, and it says, when clicked, say this. So when I click it, uh, I'm sorry, there we go. When I click it, the cat says, hey, press keys one, two, three, and four to see different ways that this works. So let's examine the very first one. What I have here is an if-then block, and that's under control. It looks like this. And inside the if-then, I put, uh, from the sensing blocks, I just put if, if key one is pressed, then do this. Inside that I have three different things. I want the cat to move 100 steps, wait one second, and then go back to x0 and y0. And the cat always starts out at x0 and y0. Now the other thing I did with that, well actually let me just show you that first. So that's key one. So if I hit the green flag, the cat tells me this, and I'm going to press key 1, and nothing happens. And the reason nothing happened is when the green flag was clicked, I wasn't pushing key 1. At that moment, key 1 was not pressed, so it skipped around that little segment of code or that script and got down to here. What I can do is I can put a forever loop there, or I can move all of this inside the forever loop and put it back. So now when I click the green flag, at any point it's always looping around here and if key 1 is pressed then this will happen. So I can hit key 1, the cat moves over there, waits one second and goes back. This is called a conditional statement in a lot of different uh, a lot of programmers will call this a conditional statement. If you work with spreadsheets it's a conditional statement. If this is true then do this. If this is not true, just skip around it. And I could put some other code down there. What I also have out here in Scratch, this is uh, a comment. And you can open or close comments. And I wrote this comment and then it tells me what this is for. To do a comment in Scratch, you can just say add comment and here's a comment. And you can attach it to a different block and I could type on that if I wanted. Anyways, back to this. Uh, for the second one, this is a little more complicated. I started out with the same thing. I did a forever loop so that at any point once I click the green flag, if this condition is true, whatever's in there will happen. So this time I use the two key. And instead of having it just jump ahead 100 steps, do you remember what that looked like? There we go. The cat kind of teleports. It's not very realistic. I want the cat to move 10 steps, but I want that to repeat 10 times. So I put that in there, and then I wanted the cat to do the same thing. Once the cat gets out there, to wait one second and go back. So I put that right after it. So let's see how this works. I'm going to hit 2 key, and you'll see it creates the effect that the cat's walking. So the cat moves 10 steps, but it does it 10 times. I'll hit the 2 key again. There we go. So here's what happens when I hit the 1 key. The cat just magically teleports. When I hit the 2 key, you get a different effect. The cat still moves to the same location, just in a different way. If I scroll down here a little bit, you can see what I did with the 3 key. So with the 3 key, it says if the 3 key is pressed, then repeat something until. This is something we haven't done, and this is over here. The repeat until block looks like this. It'll repeat until a condition is true. So what I have here is a condition inside a condition. So if I press the 3 key, then do this until this is true, and I said touching edge. And then wait one second and go back to the point. So you can actually have a condition inside a condition. You can actually have thousands of conditions inside a condition. But let's click the green flag and see what happens now. I'll hit the 3 key, and the cat should move 10 steps until touching the edge. And you saw that. The cat moved 10 steps until touching the edge. 
and then it moved on to the wait one second and it went back. All right, when the four key is pressed, I did something a little different. Uh, the first thing that's on there, when you press the four key, it says uh, that you need to press the four key again. And the reason for that is there isn't a forever loop. I have a repeat until touching edge, and then once it touches the edge, it just goes back to zero, zero. And if you want to do it again, you could press the four key again. Inside of there is an if else block. And you can find the if else block right here under control. So if you press the four key, the sprite will move 10 steps forward. Otherwise, it'll move five steps backwards. So this kind of gives you an either or situation. So let's take a look at what happens here. So if I run the program, it starts again. And if I push the four key, it then tells me to press it again. So when I push the four key, you can see the cat moves 10 steps forward. But if I let go, it moves five steps back. And if I do nothing, it goes right back to zero, zero. And then I can press the four key again, and it'll run the same code. However, since there's no forever loop, it won't constantly repeat. Hope this was helpful. Uh, now have some fun using different conditional statements and loops.